Caroline's got something big. What do you got, Caroline? Keep reeling. What is it? Look, Caroline got a rockfish. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in, wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass. Happy Saturday and welcome to Retro Bass. When it comes to fishing it old school, it's not just necessarily about the tackle and lures that you're using. Sometimes it's about that philosophy of fishing. And today on Retro Bass, it is all about getting back to a older way of fishing. I have got my two bass and buds with me and we are gonna keep it simple today and really just try to get something to tug on the line for these two. We are standing in front of the Fishing and Diving Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, a local tackle shop that has been in business since 1971. We're gonna head inside. We're gonna pick up some tackle and some frozen shrimp. We're gonna hit some of the local bridges and hopefully catch a fish or two for the cameras. All right, so let's get inside before the sun is too high. We'll get some bait and we will get on the road. So I'm here with uh, Ryan, uh, who actually incidentally has a YouTube channel called Real Angler Adventures. I will drop a link to that down below. But Ryan is a local expert and he's gonna help us get hooked up with some gear to hopefully um, get a fish or two on the line for my bass and buds. Start off, you need the rod and reel to fish with. Now, if you're coming from like an airplane or a car and you didn't bring your stuff, it's kind of basic here. If you're a bass fisherman here, like in the river, not really ocean, the ocean's entirely different kind of ball game but here in the river the Indian River Lagoon and the Banana River it's almost like bass fishing the only thing you got to do is amp up your tackle so usually usually you guys use I'm a bass fisherman too or used to be but saltwater is the name of the game here you guys usually use like 15 pound mono or fluorocarbon as your as your main line that can work you're gonna have to finesse the fish but in all reality all you need is a simple setup like that your simple spinny gear like if you guys shaky head fish or drop shot fish, just amp the tackle up. Instead of mono, you can have this 20 pound mono and this little combo here that works. This is an Akuma, Akuma combo. Doesn't really matter what company it is, but simple thing like this, little 3000 size reel, seven foot rod, six, six rod, doesn't really matter. You could either have 20 pound mono on it. That's what I would recommend because the fish here are very finicky because they get fished at so often. Like. They get lines thrown out at them almost every single day constantly. They don't have a break. So you kind of have to finesse them out. 20 pound braid or 20 pound mono is the basics. Now, if you know how to tie line to line, you either have a 20 pound mono leader or fluorocarbon leader if you have braid on your reel. But if you pick up one of these rods like we have here and it already has mono on it, you can just tie directly onto the hook. Simply, all you need is a little hooks like this because bait choices we'll show you in a minute it's going to be either frozen shrimp or live shrimp that's what i like to use everything in the river eats a shrimp so you can either use a size four hook or size two hook we we sell these ghost leader rigs here already it's already rigged up with this has 15 pound mono we have a two a size two hook that has 20 pound that's what i would recommend 15 can work but we have snook here and if, if you guys don't know anything about snook their gill plates are as sharp as knives they could cut line like this. So 20 is going to be your better option. All right, so you had the hooks, you have the rod and reel, and now you need a little bit of weight. If you're fishing underneath the bridges that we have over, he over here, that is going to be probably the most deepest part in the river. Back in the day, you could almost walk across the river, but they dredged it and because of the bridges and freight ships. So the bridges are the deepest part. I recommend you can use like one of these weights around here that work. I personally recommend these pinch weights because it's easier, you, all you do is you take your pliers, you open them up like that and just cinch them on there. I like both having a heavier one and a lighter one. The lighter one for me is a better choice because if it's too light, you can just add more weights. Now when you have the heavy ones, can't really 
deal on anything because it's only going to get heavier. So I recommend either size fives or size fours, but if you really want it to go down there deeper, quicker, the size two are your best options. Or if you're fishing the flats, you really don't need a weight, especially if you're fishing with live shrimp, you let that thing go all the way to the bottom. But if you want to, if you don't want to have your finger on the line, you just grab a couple bobbers. That way you have a visual presentation on where your bait is. And if something eats it, this thing goes straight down. So you know if you have a fish or not. Now, bait wise, you have a couple options. If you're newer to the area, I always recommend frozen shrimp. Frozen shrimp, like I said, everything in the river eats shrimp. Now, if you want to spend a little bit of extra money and grab a bucket or a bubbler to keep live shrimp, follow me back here. We got the filters back here. We always have live shrimp here for the most part. If you guys come in the summertime, a lot of the shrimp sizes around here get to get time, tend to get smaller. It's just how it is. But I always recommend live shrimp. You could get fish on frozen, but the fresh alive or even like freshly dead shrimp are your better options because they give out more scent than the frozen shrimp. All right, so we took the advice from the bait shop and we went up the causeway and we stopped at this first little overpass. I've actually driven over this bridge a number of times, but I wasn't aware that you could pull underneath and get to some deeper water. So right here it's really shallow, but it looks like about 15 to 20 feet out, it does drop off a little bit. So we've got a couple rods rigged up with some very minimal gear. We've got some frozen shrimp that are hopefully thawing and we'll see if we get a fish too, right quick. Okay, so we just got the kiddos rigged up and this is definitely the most simplistic of old school rigs. All that we've got starting right here is a pre-rigged little hook that goes to a barrel swivel. We've added one single split shot, a chunk of frozen shrimp, and that is literally it. So again, about as simplistically old school as you can get. What do you got, Caroline? Fish. Oh, oh, turn it. Oh, that looks like a puffer fish. What'd you catch? A puffer fish. Oh, I got a puffer fish. Oh. You got a puffer fish to get. Okay, so aside from that one little puffer fish, we quick getting bites on that side of the bridge. So we've moved directly underneath the bridge. We're going to be casting kind of in between the two different lanes. Uh, I think we're in a good spot because I see some birds over there. They're doing some fishing as well. <laughs> oh, you got one? Oh, wait, he's got one. Oh, you'll get it. What is that? Take your time. What is that? Uh, what is it? A trout? I don't know. It looks awesome, though. Waylon, what'd you get? Sunfish. How did he hit? Um, well, at first I was just fishing, and then I felt a little bit, and I was like, wait a minute, I'll get you on my rod. And then it started jerking off. And I caught it. That's All right, we just let that little surf perch go. I'm not exactly sure of the species, but honestly, that's kind of the point of it. I think one of the challenges for us that are really into the sport of bass fishing is you get so laser focused on pursuing that little green fish which to be honest at times is not necessarily the best species of fish to target when you're taking these kind of bass and buds so literally uh, we've gotten a puffer fish we've gotten some little surf perch and could not be happier with the day so far and that's really what it's about when it comes to fishing at old school it is just keeping it super simple setting very realistic often low expectations and honestly, just having a good old time where you're out there either on the bank or on the water. We're going to keep moving on down. Um, sorry if it's loud, but we are literally in between two highways here. Uh, hopefully, we're going to get a few more fish. I heard there might be some trout in here, and I've definitely seen some bigger fish caught on the old Fish Brain app. So let's get to it. Yeah. Well, no, real Caroline, what do you got? I don't know. Can I take your time? Take your time. Oh, 
Take your time. Keep reeling. She got a bass. Or no, not a bass, like a trout. does have teeth. All right, Bass and Buds. Well, I heard there was some little trout underneath this bridge and look at that lunker we just got. <laughs> Caroline, how did he fight? Um, hard. Hard. <laughs> look at that. Oh, that is awesome. That's cool. Um, what's funny is I've actually never caught a sea trout before and I, I guess I still haven't. So good job, Caroline. Oh my goodness, look at those teeth. You hold it right there. I got a fish. I got a fish. I can feel it. What do you got, Caroline? I don't know. Wow, a big puffer fish. What? An, a bigger puffer fish. An even bigger puffer fish. Wow, that's a really cool one, huh? Yeah. Oh, Caroline, Rio, what do you got? Okay, take your time. Whoa, reel it in. Take your time. Hold that rod tip right up where it is. Keep reeling, babe. What do you got, Caroline? All right. Caroline got another little surf perch here. I don't know what the name of that. I'm going to have to look that up. Is that a. I don't even, I don't even want to guess what that is. Uh, but that is a pretty looking little Florida fish. So Caroline's got the hot hand today. Everybody, every day it's somebody. The last time it was way up. Way you got a fish? All right, so Caroline has been the uh, little perch queen here. Nice job. Did he hit hard? Yeah. <laughs> Came out of nowhere. And look, we actually get to save the hook for one, so that'll be good. All right, so let this little guy go, and we'll get back in there to get another one. Hold on. He's got a giant fish. What do you got? Whoa! Oh my gosh, it's a big trout. Wait, well, he's got a big old trout. Oh, get him in, let me see. What? Oh my gosh, big fish of the day. Oh. Oh, Waylon just got the big fish of the day. We had a nice sea trout or a speckled trout, I'm not sure which. Waylon had the hot hand for a minute, but Waylon just uh, evened up the score with a nice big fish of the day. Look at him. He's pretty cool, huh? huh? <laughs> High five. So the action has been pretty hot and heavy right between these two bridges. I feel like just about every time uh, one of my bass and buds catches a fish and I re-rig, the other one is hooked up. It's kind of funny. I expected us to be doing a ton of spot hopping today. I kind of had a number of different spots picked out on the old GPS, but we've literally moved about 50 feet from where we started today. And the action's been so good in between these two bridges that we have not actually moved once. We'll check out a few other spots today, but it's always kind of hard to leave them biting. What? Oh, Wade's got a fish. Oh, Wade's got a fish. What is it? Come here, Kelly. What is that? Bring it here. Let me see it. I got one of those. Oh, okay. Come over here. Oh. Oh, no. oh, uh oh, we got a puffer fish. That thing jumped off. I'm not going to grab it. <laughs> bye bye. Oh, bye, bye. Take your time. What do you got? Is it hard? <laughs> oh, what is with these guys? Another puffer. <laughs> Yet another puffer fish for Caroline. Oh! Those suckers have some sharp teeth. He just bit through the leader. Um, Rayon's got a fish. What is it? No! A 
Claw Furfur. <laughs> so Waylon just got another puffer fish. Let's see him, man. <laughs> All right, so there's a nice puffer fish for Waylon. Uh, who's got more puffer fish today, you or your hey, sister? Me. Hey. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like, well, I feel like we there. both caught three, actually. What's that? How many, so how many fish did you get today, Wayne, so, so far? I got four. Four got fish. Three. Nice. And I got five. How many did you get, Caroline? Five. You got five? But who got the big fish? Uh, me. Yep. All right, so there's another nice puffer fish. Look at this guy. Uh, these things have some teeth on them like Austin Powers. It is crazy. Uh, you do not want to get your finger anywhere near that. Uh, woo, and you can even hear him crunching that hook. So we'll actually keep, be able to keep the hook on this guy. We'll let him go and maybe rig up and try to get one more. Yes. Do some more retro fishing. Oh, Kyle, got a fish. Hug your rod tip up. Oh. Alright, Caroline got another puffer fish. Uh, look at him, it's finally, finally we got a puffer fish that's doing a little bit of puffing here. By the time we're done bassing buds, I don't think there's gonna be a puffer fish that's left unhooked in Cape Canaveral. <laughs> look at this, oh my goodness. Uh, that is pretty wild. So that is a nice little puffer fish that Caroline got and he was blown up a little bit, wasn't he? Uh-huh. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, try to let this guy go before he bites my hook in half. I got six fish today. Yeah. Oh, Way's got one. Again? What do you got, Way? Like Way's got another one. <laughs> it feels like one. Maybe it's not. It is. It's another puffer fish. Uh, Bring him in. I'm gonna. I'm gonna sell. Young man, I'm gonna sell puffer fish. Come here. <laughs> Waylon just said he and Caroline are gonna set a world record for puffer fish, and uh, I think you might be right. <laughs> oh, nice one. Look at that. I think we've caught so many puffer fish today. We're going to have to get neutral on Paul to write a retro puffer song. <laughs> Look at that. I got fro puff fin. You know how to dip up for something big. It's not a puffer fish. Keep reeling. Reel. Caroline's got something big. What do you got, Caroline? Keep reeling. Is that? What is it? Look. Caroline got a rockfish. What? That's a fish. Caroline got a rockfish. Nice one, babe. Wait, that's a rock? Or is that a fish? <laughs> uh, is that a rock or is that uh, Caroline, rockfish, bravo. Those things are hard Well, to she get. really set the hook in this piece of coral, so good job, babe. <laughs> <laughs> was, that, was that rock a good fight? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to kiss it? No. <laughs> Should I? No. <laughs> Uh, I thought we had some like monster puffer fish in there. I know. I was just like, that's so lumpy. It looks like a puffer fish. All right, so we're down to our final two shrimp of the day. Oh, 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 oh. oh Caroline got something. <laughs> Reel it in, babe. It's a rock. Oh, what is it? It's a puffer fish. Now, are we getting more pieces? All right, last puffer of the day for Caroline. <laughs> Listen to this guy, holy mackerel. I think he's singing the retro puffer song. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Even though we've never caught a single puffer fish. You're like the puffer fish expert now. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 
at first I was like, oh wow, it's rare to get a puffer fish. But then it's not. Yeah. Well, all right, Bass and Buds, hope you enjoyed our little venture into old school saltwater bait fishing. Got a feeling that these two Bass and Buds definitely enjoyed the afternoon on the bank. Till next time, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old, old school. school. Fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. <laughs>